Okay, so for my project this year, um, I worked on an integration between um, Cisco ACI and OpenNMS using the OpenMS integration API. Um, this is actually a project that I started working on my past employer um, a couple dev jams ago where I, I built this integration. Um, they, they have a fairly large uh, Cisco ACI footprint in their data centers and I built an integration of OpenMS using the uh, OpenMS core integration um, framework. This year I was porting it to the OpenMS integration API, a much lighter weight framework. Um, the, uh, the original, uh, I originally had a Cisco APIC controller set up, but with the Cisco sandbox, it, uh, but it was the always available is not available today. So <laughs> shout out to Mike for you know, hooking up his friend, me up with his friend to get, uh, get an APIC environment set up for this. So I'm gonna connect to the, gonna connect to their VPN. <laughs> it is a development environment. <laughs> to make sure that password doesn't work anymore before we publish the video. <laughs> All right, so we're established. So this is the, uh, the APIC controller I'm connected to. So ACI, for those of you that may not know, is a software-defined networking solution um, where you know, the control plane is separated uh, within what they call APIC controllers. And so this is, this is the UI to the APIC controller in the ACI. And we'll go look at the topology. So this is a fairly simple little uh, ACI fabric. It's, it's got a uh, couple spines and a couple leaf nodes within it. Um, and then the APIC controllers themselves. And so my plugin, pull that up. So it's, a, it's out here uh, under OpenMS ACI plugin. Um, the documentation is still a little bit of work in progress. Uh, I'm going to walk through actually installing uh, the plugin, getting it running, and showing it to you in OpenMS. OpenMS is already running here. So. Right, so we're going to get the install feature info. Got an extra character. Install the plugin. I probably should show you before I do this. Um, there's actually the configuration. So part of what I did was I came up with a configuration. Uh, XML format for configuring. Um, I, I generically just called it southbound configuration. Uh, could, original intent was uh, for connecting to any element, southbound element manager uh, for integrating with Open OpenNMS. Uh, so this this particular one has uh, you can have one or many southbound clusters within your southbound configuration. Um, you can specify a type and a name for your cluster. You have a poll duration in minutes. So originally I set up to do uh, scheduled polling, um, but then later I realized the uh, Cisco ACI REST API support WebSockets. So I went back and redid it with WebSockets. So you can, you can set the poll duration to zero and it'll automatically connect via WebSockets instead of poll polling. Uh, you can have one or many southbound elements. So if, you're, if you've got uh, multiple APIC servers, controllers, uh, for high availability, you can have all your nodes and it'll do kind of a round robin uh, 
connection attempts to it. So if it fails the first, it'll go to the next. And keep trying until it gets a connection. So you've got to have this in your Etsy directory, uh, which I already have. And then once you've got that, you can install the feature plugin. Hopefully this works. All right, yep. Okay, there's, um, I've got a number of, oh, we probably wanna uh, first import the provision rec, uh, the provision requisition, so. That's the old cluster. It's the Cisco Sandbox one. There we go. Oh, you also have to import the certificate if you're gonna connect to it. Which I've already done that. This might take a minute. So it's basically going out to the APIC controller and it's pulling um, all the topology, the, all the inventory, and it's building the requisition. Sometimes it's really quick, sometimes it takes a minute. It's definitely connected. Yeah, the VPN can't seem to maintain any connection for. Yeah, not sure why. Okay, there it goes. So, so here, pull back all the inventory. And basically what it does is um, it adds the, it adds the APIC as a, as a monitored node, and then all of the, the leaf and spine switches. And so uh, it adds the interfaces. They've, they've got a, uh, both a IPv4 and IPv6 uh, interface, and then adds a couple categories. Um, that's a hard-coded latitude and longitude right now. Um, the, uh, all the metadata is basically just took all the JSON uh, attributes and just spun through them and added them as metadata because there's a lot, of, a lot of information there, um, like serial number, MAC addresses. Uh, so now we need to send the event in so that I can, we can actually import the requisition. Oh, that's the old one. Need to update my readme. Mm -hmm. Go over here. Let's get out of this. Send in the reload import. Give it a few minutes. Oh, I want to show you too. I also added some commands so you can. There's you can stop a cluster, start a cluster. You can check the status. You can uh, get cluster information, see what clusters you're you're connected to. Uh, I don't know if this still works. It'll actually go out and pull faults. Uh, I forget, but I think it takes uh, like a timestamp, so it'll go get all the faults for from a certain period point in time until now. And then you can restart uh, a cluster. So um, let me show. Okay, so this just shows there's only the one cluster configured for this, um, and it just shows you uh, what it's connected to, the IP address. And you, you can get the status too, but the status doesn't uh, just tells you it's you know basically the same information. It's up and running. Um, Let's see. We'll see if it. If... Okay. 
Okay, it still hasn't discovered all the nodes yet. Let's go look at the requisition. Okay, so yeah, so it discovered all of them. And you can go look, it should be able to look at the nodes. Yeah, so there's the APIC, um, each of the leaf switches and each of the spine switches. We can go look at uh, the events. Hopefully there's been some come in by now. Yeah, so I I also created, uh, I didn't do that this, this part this week, but, um, Previously, when I worked on it, I they've got all of their all of their fault codes. So, um, see the, so like right here, you see this fault code F103824. They've got an HTML page that defines all of their fault codes, and it gives you pretty good documentation. And I thought it's basically what I want in the event config, right? So, I had to break out my old Perl skills and spin through their HTML page and generate event config off of their HTML page. So there's actually a lot of fault codes and that's all checked in with this. So every one of the APIC fault codes is already has event configuration uh, for it. So um, that's basically it. Any, any questions? Okay.